everyone, in this tutorial we will be going over how to download the source code for Unreal Engine from GitHub as well as how to build the Unreal Engine source code in Visual Studio so that by the end of the video you will be able to run Unreal Engine from source. To get started, the first couple of things we need for this video are an Epic Games account as well as a GitHub account. So if you don't have either of those then pause the video and quickly create the accounts that you do not have because you will need both of them in order to access the official Epic Games Unreal Engine GitHub repository. Once you have both a GitHub account and an Epic Games account, we need to link the two together. So make sure that you are currently signed into both accounts. Then at UnrealEngine.com, hover over your account name and click on Personal. From here, click on Connections, then click on Accounts, then click on the connect button under where it says GitHub. Now after you click the link account button, you will be prompted by GitHub to authorize Epic Games to access your GitHub account. Go ahead and grant them access. After doing that, you will be redirected back to your Epic Games account's connections and you should now see that your GitHub account is indeed linked. However, there is still one more very important thing to do before being able to access the Unreal Engine source code, and that is to actually join the Epic Games organization on GitHub. In order to do that, go to the inbox of the email address of the GitHub account that you just connected. You may have gotten a few emails since we connected the two accounts, but the one to look out for is this email from GitHub subjected Epic Team Admin has invited you to join the Epic Games organization. Open up that email and click the button labeled Join Epic Games. That should have opened up this Epic Games organization invitation page on GitHub. From here, click on Join Epic Games. You will then be taken to the Epic Games GitHub page where you should now be able to access the Unreal Engine source code repository. Just a reminder that links to the major web pages and other useful information referenced in this video will be in the description below. Once you are on the GitHub repository page for the Unreal Engine source code, click on this code button and copy this URL from the pop-up so that we can clone this repository shortly after. Now in this video, we will be cloning the repository using Git in a command line interface, so before we move on, if you don't have Git installed, then please go to this Git downloads page and run through the installer for Git. It should be very straightforward, you can literally use the default setup options, Feel free to pause the video and return once you have Git installed on your computer. Moving on to cloning the repository, let's open up Git Bash or any command line interpreter application and CD into the location where you want to place the Unreal Engine repo. I'm going to choose my documents folder for this, but it generally doesn't matter where we place the repo so long as the absolute path of the current directory isn't too long and there isn't already a subdirectory within here called Unreal Engine. To clone the repo, just type out git clone, paste in the link to the Unreal Engine repository that we just copied earlier and press enter. Note that this process will take a while depending on your internet speed, so feel free to pause the video and come back when this is done. After the git clone command has finished running, if it was successful, there should now be a new directory in the current working directory called Unreal Engine. So let's cd into that new directory. And if we list out the files in this directory, you will notice that the Unreal Engine source code from GitHub, specifically the files from the release branch, is now on our local machine. When we cloned this repository, not only did we download all the files from one line of development of Unreal Engine source, but also we can now download all the files from another branch or from a specific revision of a branch. The branch that was chosen by default is the release branch, which contains the latest stable production ready release of Unreal Engine, which at the time of filming this video is version 4.27.1. By the time you're watching this video, the branch may point to a newer version of UE4, perhaps even UE5. If you run the git branch command, you'll see all the various branches. Note that you can ignore wherever it says remote slash origin, that is not a part of the branch name. Also, all the commands used in this video will be in the description below. The branch is named after the newest versions of Unreal Engine right now at the moment 4.27 and 5.0 are frequently updated, hence they may not be completely stable since they include the newest changes made to the engine and aren't heavily QA tested. 
in addition to those two branches, the Master and UE5 main branches, which at the time of filming are tracking Unreal versions 4.28 and 5.1 respectively, are also being constantly modified. Similar to the release branch, the Master and UE5 main branches in the future can represent different versions of the engine than what they are currently. But for older versions of Unreal Engine that are no longer being actively worked on, for example UE5 Early Access, 4.26 and prior, those branches end up containing the source code of the latest stable release of the version they are named after. By the time you're watching this video, the 4.27 and 5.0 branches may be sitting idle while the master UE5 main and some other new branches are tracking the latest commits of an even newer version of Unreal, if that. And if you're ever unsure of what version of Unreal Engine that a branch is following, you can always go to the repo on the Epic Games GitHub, select the branch that you're interested in, and look at the version values down here in this version.h file. And if you're ever wondering about how often a branch gets updated, you can also look at the commit history of any of the branches listed here. To get out of this list and similar looking list, just press Q. You can also look into tags which for the Unreal Engine repository are each usually associated with a specific release or preview of Unreal Engine. We can list out all the tags in the repo by running git tag. In terms of deciding between whether to go with the branch or to go with the tag, the difference between them is that branches are subject to change while tags are immutable. Tags point to specific snapshots of the repository at particular moments in time. Generally, the source code that a tag references is stable and extensively QA tested. Branches, on the other hand, are separate ongoing threads of development with the intention of sharing your modifications with other people and or retrieving other people's changes. This mainly applies to the newer actively worked on branches. Most of the other branches in the Unreal Engine repo don't get updated anymore, so those branches end up resembling certain tags. So if you plan on frequently grabbing the very latest changes from the remote Unreal Engine repository on the Epic Games GitHub, or sharing any alterations to the engine code with everyone, then I would recommend using the newest or active branches. Otherwise, if you just want to minimize the amount of issues experienced while developing games, then I would recommend using tags, the release branch, or one of the older non-active branches. Moving on, if you want the current working directory's files to be updated to match those in a different branch or tag, then check out that branch or tag by running git checkout and passing the name of the branch or tag. Like the git clone command, this could take a while depending on your internet speed. For this video, I'm going to check out the 5.0 branch because I'm primarily interested in Unreal Engine 5, and at this time UE5 Early Access hasn't been updated in 6 months, while the UE5 main branch is less stable than the 5.0 branch since UE5 main is tracking a later version of Unreal Engine 5. Unfortunately, at present, Unreal version 5.0 is also a work in progress, but it's probably the best way for most people to experiment with UE5 for now, as there are no truly stable production ready versions of Unreal Engine 5 out yet. Hopefully by the time you're watching this video you won't even have to switch out of the default release branch or there will be some Unreal Engine 5 release tag that you can check out instead. Once you have decided on which branch or tag to use, let's proceed with actually building the engine. Now in this video, I will be using Visual Studio to do this since I am on Windows. So if you're on Windows 2 but don't have Visual Studio installed, then please go to the Visual Studio Downloads page where you can download the Visual Studio installer, which you would use to install Visual Studio. In this video, I'm using Visual Studio 2019 community version, but other versions of Visual Studio should be fine depending on the version of Unreal Engine Source that you plan on building. Though if you're on Mac, then Xcode rather than Visual Studio would be used to build Unreal, and if you're on Linux, then the make utility slash command would be used instead to build Unreal. Just make sure that when you're installing Visual Studio to include these three workloads with your Visual Studio installation. They include .NET Desktop Development, Desktop Development with C++, and Game Development with C++. If you already have Visual Studio installed, then double check that you have these three workloads installed. If not, then modify your installation to include them. Now before we can build the Unreal Engine project in Visual Studio, we need to run two batch files that together will create the Visual Studio solution file for Unreal Engine. The first one is called setup.bat, so go ahead and run that file. Depending on your internet speed, the setup script may take a while. Now if you're on Linux or Mac, you are going to run two shell scripts instead of two batched scripts. 
In this case, you would run the setup.sh file in place of the setup.bat file. And in lieu of a Visual Studio solution file, the two shell scripts will create an Xcode workspace file on Mac and project files for Make on Linux. After the setup script has finished, the second one is called generate project files.bat if you are on Windows or generate project files.sh if you're on Mac or Linux. So go ahead and run that file as well. If both the setup and generate project file scripts ran successfully, we can finally build the Unreal Engine source code. To do that on Linux, you would just run the make command. To do that on Mac, you would open up the newly created XC workspace file in Xcode and build the editor there. But since I'm on Windows, there is instead now a Visual Studio solution file in my Unreal Engine directory. So I'm going to open up the source code in Visual Studio. And from here, go up and confirm that the solution configuration is development editor and that the solution platform is Win64. After that, right click where it says UE5 or UE4 under the engine engine folder and select build. Depending on your computer's hardware specifications, this build could take a very long time, so feel free to pause the video and come back when the engine is done compiling. I know that took a while, but don't worry, the first time building Unreal Engine from source after generating the project files will always take what seems like forever, but subsequent builds should not take nearly as long. However, keep in mind that events such as Visual Studio updates, Xcode updates, operating system updates, and etc. may require you to rebuild the whole engine again, which will take a very long time. Now that the engine has been built, let's double check that everything worked by launching the editor. A way to go about this, regardless of your computer's platform, is to go to your Unreal Engine directory, navigate to the Engine folder, then the Binaries folder, then the folder named after your host operating system, which in my case is Win64. Scroll down and you can double click this executable called Unreal Editor. Know that this file can also go under a different yet similar name such as UE4 Editor or UE5 Editor. But in this video, since I'm on Windows, although there is nothing wrong with this application file, I'm going to run the engine via Visual Studio. So to do that in Visual Studio, right click the engine again, select set as startup project, and either press the F5 key or click on this debug button. Note that the first time loading the editor may also take a while. Once the editor has successfully launched, let's just quickly create a new project, use whatever template you want, whatever default settings you want, whatever location you want, and whatever name you want. After the project has been created, we can run the project from here in Visual Studio like I just did with the engine, or if you're not on Windows, you can just double click the U project file instead. If you created a blueprint project, then the project would have opened up automatically in a new instance of the editor by now. Note that whether it's a blueprint or C++ project, you'll have to wait a while for the shaders to compile upon opening a project in the editor for the first time after building the engine. Once the project has opened in the editor, you can try playing the game and messing around with the project like you normally would. If everything looks good, Good, then congratulations you have successfully downloaded and built Unreal Engine from source. That concludes this video so if you found it helpful then please like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on our other social media pages, join the discord server, consider supporting Flopram. Links to all of that are in the description below. Special thanks to our higher tier patrons and Logical Cuber, Michael Camiso, Graham Devine, James Rabowen, Dwight Everhart, Mark Wedge, Jimmy Westcott, Morgan Heidemann, Elise Bioblaze Payne, Lucas Moskin, and Rick Morgan. You guys truly help us create educational content and keep that content on YouTube for free. To everyone though, thank you for watching and hope you have a nice day.